Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the DAC European Qualifiers Team Secret facing off against Na'Vi. That's right. It's happening again. Another best of three between these two teams. But this time around, everything will be at stake. These two teams will face each other in elimination. One of these teams is going to be heading to the playoffs. The other team will be knocked out of the DAC Qualifiers. So... Let's get into it. Secret versus Na'Vi. Parker, we already saw Secret losing up against Na'Vi, especially that uh, rather humorous Game 3 where we saw the exact same draft from Team Secret and Na'Vi almost the same exact exact same thing. Uh, it seems like these two teams do have a certain flavor against each other. Yeah, and I think that's where, even though Secret maybe on paper should be favorites, Na'Vi seem to match up well against Secret. Uh, they seem to throw them off uh, often in the early early to mid game, uh, and I think Navi some of their drafts are really good. They just had these really good mid game spikes around some of uh, like their their blink dagger timings. They had like really good heroes for Dendi. One game on the Tinker, another successful game on the the TA. So we're gonna be looking towards something fairly similar this time around. Navi get themselves the Slada, so making sure they have that reliable initiate and taking it away from uh, Team Secret. Team Secret. We'll see uh, what they're going to pick up here. There's plenty of those saving support heroes left. Do they want to pick up uh, anything alongside a Shadow Demon or Dazzle or Vengeful Spirit? That seems to be, um, right now, any one of those three supports is usually going to be picked up by um, one of these teams. Just because uh, it feels like saving heroes is pretty good right now because of the... Uh, the team fight orientation, but there also seems like, I don't know how you feel about it, Gods, but I, it seems like there is also a greater push towards um, towards late game. I, I feel like we're not seeing the same kind of five-man death ball strats, like the five-man, like, we just clash into each other over and over. I, I, I feel like we've progressed a little bit past that. It, it does feel like it's become a bit more nuanced rather than, yeah, like, like you say, brain, brainless, get neck, five men push down lanes, SC Luna's kind of fallen off, and I, yeah. I definitely agree that's become more more like game oriented. I think teams have adjusted a lot more to the patch and have gotten better at dealing with that or just remembered how they used to deal with it because it hasn't necessarily changed too much. The general principle mm -hmm. is still the same. So uh, the Venture Secret, something flexible. More often than not, it is in the support role for them, but it has been played, I think, at least once back going back to their first best of three by MP as well. <laughs> it's the slaughter versus weaver it keeps on happening every single time yeah. the slaughter first pick then weaver gets a, ends up being on the other side uh in some ways because it is a versatile pickup just like slaughter off lane support or uh safe lane carry all available to that hero um but then i think also synergy wise slaughter weaver is uh, a very dangerous duo that needs to be prevented so uh, one support a piece and one question mark a piece with the rubik now on the side of navi yep so slight differentiation with uh, Navi having the first pick. Interesting, Navi on the Radiant side too. A lot of the last series they played, it was always like Navi on the Dire, Secret often with the first pick. So it does feel like there's already been some slight changes in the way the draft work. And it was actually Puppy who had selection choosing Dire at the start of this uh, game. So uh, giving Navi Radiant side and first pick. But we'll see what Team Secret look to do now with this more physical damage oriented draft of theirs. They're going to have the draw ranges denied from them. So, a little bit worried about what might be coming there. And the PA, the PA ban is one of those things like you ban PA, it's like, all right, I wonder what they might be looking for with the, a PA ban. And well, Draw Ranger, one of the better heroes, uh, one of the wor worst heroes to have against the PA. Gons, have you uh, have you unlocked the secret as to the, uh, the mysterious dire side picks that the some of the higher teams have been picking up because Radiant was uh, very, very preferred at ESL 1 Genting. Remember, everyone was shooting using Radiant until the finals where Newbie and DC, uh, or before that, Newbie was the only team choosing Dire, and the DC also did that. And now I've seen a few more teams picking that up as well. Have you unlocked any any of that mystery? Not really. I mean, I, I haven't talked to any of the teams, so it's like, I guess it's like just speculation, I guess. I think that Dire Side Shrine placement is much better for their offlane than the Radiant offlane one. Mm -hmm. um, it's really easy just to go to that Dire offlane, throw your spells, Shrine up, and then keep fighting. Um, Roshan, I, I think, is like fairly neutral, maybe slightly Dire favored. I don't think it's a, a big 
like a major difference. Like Radiant has that really nice high ground where that cliff is, but similarly that cliff can work to to Dyer's advantage if they can get control of that area. So I'm not I'm not totally sure to be honest. We'll see if it uh, works out here for Team Secret. They ban away PA and Templar Assassin. Uh, Chen is going to be a notable ban by Na'Vi. Can't let that fall into the hands of Puppy again. That micro in, what was it, Game 2, I think? That was real strong. Or no, 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 no that wasn't Game 2 because they had the same exact draft. So that had to be Game 1? That was against a different... Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was that's the right. uh, following uh, Adfinim series, I believe. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So we'll see what Secret look to get. Mid one heroes are probably like the big thing you're going to be looking at with Secret. He's been their big playmaker for the most part. Had a really sick Invoker game. His Sniper game, he was like 21 and 0 on as well. So Ogre picked up. Well, that, that kind of leads lead some credence towards that Sniper pick. Yeah, it certainly um, or at does. Least something similar, but because I, I, if it's not uh, if it's not SF or it's not Sniper. Uh, I feel like you would be considering the the Earth Spirit pickup for for Team Secret as a be better roaming power, but the Ogre Magi has a lot more static laning phase, and obviously the the great synergy with mid, the potential mid one course coming up. Yeah, any anytime I see an Ogre nowadays, like the first hero that comes to mind is like, oh, they're picking Sniper. Navi pick a Quop, so they get their mid laner, something that's actually a good gap closer against the Sniper and can look to. Have a good laning stage there not to say for sure going to be that sniper but it is uh definitely a high possibility and something that navi will similarly be thinking that the same when you see the ogre pick yeah absolutely it's kind of interesting that navi do pick up that um their their mid later even though they have an idea of what could be coming it's kind of surprising me that they don't actually just wait it out but apparently they want yeah. to be able to hold on to uh that slardar uh and and keep him as a question mark they don't want to lock him down into an off laner uh or a support just yet and and i think part of that is the fact that secret hey we look at their lineup Ooh, puck well that's definitely a, a switcheroo well they go for uh the matchup advantage mid lane well not really advantage but a better matchup than the, perhaps the sniper would have had against the queen of pain one of the kind of classic 1v1s the puck versus quap now Navi will have to either reveal kind of what the Slada is doing or pick a, their carry. At this point, you can kind of pick Pycats here if you want. You're not too worried. Secret have that overall last pick. And the nice thing about the Puck is it is still flexible. It could still be an offlaner. Even without the Drow, it is a possibility. So if they see something they want as a, a last pick from mid one, uh, that could come out as like an overall 10th pick. But it, it feels like Secret are lacking somewhat in initiation right now. So I'm not... Well, I guess the puck as an offlaner can work okay as an initiator. It's more about when you get that blink dagger timing. So, uh, not sure how I feel about like an offlane puck if they get some kind of snowballing mid with uh, Kezu potentially getting shut down by Navi. Yeah, I, I think uh, I like the idea of the mid the mid puck here if they're going to be running the offlane weaver uh, because we were having that conversation yesterday with all these offlane weavers being picked up. That there is these teams are severely lacking initiation. And if you're going to take your offlane position, which is is leading up to this tournament, has been divided in in pretty much half. It's been either some sort of mech sustain hero that that uh, plays pretty fast for you and gets an early mech and is your sustain for team fights, or it's uh, an early blink dagger hero and gives you your your team fight initiation. Um, but but the offlane weavers have thrown a, a total wrench in all of that, and it does leave some of the lineups lacking, sometimes in both in initiation and sustain. Um, so I do kind of like the idea that they, they pick up the puck here, um, almost no matter what the roles are going to be. Navi, go for the fourth pick, Axe now. Yeah, this was their the game-changing pick in that game three, and a hero that seems to really suit them in their style. For Na'Vi, it's, I, I really like seeing them when they have these aggressive initiating heroes. It seems when they're at their best, when both General and RMN can be playing gap closes, like the Axe Slider. Like having just, most teams will just go for one, like be happy with a Slider and then put a Weaver in an offlane or put like a more farming core there. But for Na'Vi, I think having both General and RMN on that role works just fine because PyCat and Dendi are normally playing like these more hard farmers and looking to scale a lot better. So they need those, having multiple players in that role seems to work better for them. Juggernaut. Going to be a uh, ban away here by Team Secret. Would have been... I don't know. I, uh, Juggernaut doesn't feel all too good for me. Um, 
against Weaver and Puck. Those are two pretty mobile heroes that are usually able to deal with Omni Slash pretty well. But it would give them, uh, I, I would give Navi, I guess, a pretty decent pushing power um, off that with the uh, the healing ward. And it would just get, in general, give them really good mid game team fight. Yeah. So, Doxy ban an Ursa pick. Okay. That's very different approach than the Jug. I mean, there is some, they both have that single target kill potential, but Jug is more that like well-rounded, can push, can uh, have provide some heal for his team, have some sustain. Ursa is all in on the aggression for Navi. Don't they, don't they both uh, have that same problem with very mobile Medusa. cores though? With uh, the Weaver and Puck and now Medusa. Yeah. Whoa. I, I feel like Ursa is a pick that surprises me because normally, most of the, more often than not, Ursa is being picked up because he counters an enemy hero. Like you're not just seeing Ursa picked up for the sake of having an Ursa on your team for having an aggressive core. You're seeing it because there's like a Timbersaw on the other team, or you have a laning matchup mid where he's against like an Alchemist or something. Uh, just casually picking an Ursa is a bit unexpected in my mind. All right, well, this Medusa. <laughs> It's going to be yeah. a weird one. So it's, uh, it's what, mid Puck, off lane Weaver, and uh, safe lane mid -Medusa, Medusa, or mid Medusa, and then do we change things up and make it off lane Puck? And uh, I was thinking core we uh, Vengeful Spirit at that point. Oh, support Weaver. So Puppy's yeah, playing Weaver. Yeah, yeah mid one is going to be, I think the Medusa ha it wants to be mid lane because that's where... You can get the most XP, you match up pretty well against the Queen of Pain, you've got the Bloodlust, so I think Deuce Mid is the one thing I feel like needs to happen, and then yeah, they put the Venge onto MP, so that was what we saw, like, back going back to the start of these qualifiers, and I like the Deuce pick a lot, like, against the Ursa, it means, I, I don't think Ursa's gonna be able to do a whole lot, there's two big initiators in the Slaughter and the Axe, and it means that Medusa's just a core that's not gonna instantly die if you get Blink Crushed or Blink Hold. Yeah, it's funny. We were, we were talking about uh, how Ogre has this synergy with these um, with these other mids. You know, the Sniper. Uh, you know, SF's a nice one as well. Uh, Lone Druid. Like, these kind of uh, ranged uh, physical DPS, kind of squishy. You know, all, all those heroes sync up really well with Bloodlust. Um, and the Sniper in particular, because his damage is uh, a little bit weak, and he's also very reliant on attack speed because of headshot early on. Uh, Medusa is a hero that is very uh, infamous for having very poor damage for a really long time. So the fact that they were able to set all, this whole entire strategy up with both Ogre as well as uh, the core Vengeful Spirit, I really like the way that uh, Secret cobbled this whole entire draft together and it does feel like there's a lot more credibility to a Medusa carry when you've got these yeah. two kind of damage amplifiers. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm still got question marks in my head about the Ursa pick and what it's intending to do this game. Even before the Medusa pick, I was like, well, Ursa's not great against Puck or Weaver. I mean, I guess the Weaver's going to be a support, so that's one thing slightly going his way. But even a core Venger, if you think of Ursa like, oh yeah, that's the kind of core you want against a Venge. So, yeah. I Venge. mean, and Navi just have to, have to have this idea that they can beat Secret by winning the lanes and like snowballing and getting Roche control. That, that to me is like all, that, that's what this Ursa pick says, because it does not work in this game as like a counter to secret. So it must be something that Navi think suits their style. Yeah. So Navi just kind of focusing on their own, on their own drafts and their own kind of play style against secret. Secret definitely going to be playing the longer game here with the, uh, the Medusa for sure. <laughs> poor, poor Biffer. Look at this guy. He just, puppy's been on his ass this whole entire time. Now general is going to be receiving a face full of flaming garbage from the Ogre Magi ignite. Does a decent amount of damage. They're actually just going to go back and activate a base shrine since they're both at half HP and maybe TP out. But it is going to be an aggro train lane coming out from Secret. Davi are dodging it. They've already put PyCat up at the top lane against uh, Kezu's Puck. Oh, Dendi mid taking early harass. So this is annoying for him. It means he's gone into level one blink. Doesn't have that Shadow Strike harass. So already you can see how this mid matchup is not going to be all too favorable for Dendi. And this laning setup looking fairly good for Team Secret. Like, they've set up so that bottom lane is really hard to lane in against this Ogre Venge. Top lane Puck's going to get... I mean, there's not really any kill threat onto this Puck, at least currently. So, all three lanes should, should be pretty good for Secret. Yeah, I love this uh, this aggressive ward that they got down. 
not only is it going to be able to scout rotations and not get countered, right? It's going to be able to see some of the support rotations into mid lane and give mid one the heads up that he kind of needs in the early landing phase and also give them a little bit idea of what General's up to uh, as he has been forced into the Radiant Jungle since that aggro tri-lane slash dual lane scenario. It's, it's just too tough for uh, an axe and generally this hero does jungle quite efficiently. It looks like Navi didn't see these lanes coming. Like General has Tengos and he had double yeah. salve, which I th I think that the items to jungle is still the iron talent. So he must have been expecting a one v one against the puck uh, down bottom, and then they would just like go top with this Ursa Rubik and like try and hold their own. Like they weren't going to win with that aggro lane on Navi's side, but they can at least be annoying. Oh, Valor has come in though, and he's messing with <laughs> with General. So he took one of the small centaurs too yeah. and now he's going to be taking half the experience of the big centaur even if he can't claim its bounty so rubik's gonna have to pull double duty here help out general as well as dendy but it's an ogre not much you can really do against this hero as he is so naturally tanky pycat getting a couple right clicks here onto kezu in the top lane but as you said there really shouldn't be much kill potential um they're even gonna have puppy here pulling in so actually going to make this lane even harder for PyCat to work around. Yeah, the the good news for, for Na'Vi is they're getting a little bit more out of the map since they have a pseudo jungler and RMM was sitting bottom, getting XP, getting a couple CS. So they are getting a little bit extra in terms of overall farm, but the other the, the lanes being lost doesn't feel like it's, it's overall worth it. With that said, mid lane is currently going a little bit better. Dendi getting the help from the Rubik has helped harass mid one down fairly low here, so. All right, PyCat picked up a haste rune. <laughs> Death oh. to pile, I die. Oh, oh man. I like yeah, that pickup, great. man. They're, they're just like, nah, screw Py. Screw his shenanigans in the jungle. Yep. He's messing everything up. He's being a constant threat to general. Let's use this haste rune to, to kick him the hell out. Did he TP in with the haste rune, like from top, or was he just already rotating bottom? Uh, he TP'd in. He TP'd into the shrine. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a useful play. I think they were planning on rotating Pi down bottom anyways. Uh, a Pika, that is. Yeah. Um, given the laning step, I don't think it was all too favorable for Navi. They want this Axe versus Puck matchup. Puck doesn't really threaten the Axe all too much. It does a little bit more now because Puck has a level advantage, but um, this is the laning step Navi were hoping for with their initial move out. Now they've now they've actually got it. They are a little bit behind though, uh, in terms of overall levels and farm. You know, like this uh, puppy. Uh, if he comes back to the attacker or try lane, I'm pretty sure they still easily outlane this scenario for Navi. They try and get a pull off. Nice wave of terror out there from MP to actually pull the creeps right back to him. So. They continue a very nice creep equilibrium that forces Navi forward and in very much potential danger of the uh, Vengeful Spirit and her early laning presence. That's one of the things that I, that I love the, the core Vengeful Spirit here is because it's so nice and aggressive and powerful early on that it really does cover some of the Medusa's weak points. Yeah, this is a Venge that's happy to be in a 3v3 lane, has the early levels, has Boots Wand, now a Bassy Ring. Like, this is a perfect setup for MP to be in a 3v3 type lane, so... Uh, I definitely agree. If, if Puppy wants to come back down bottom, it is a lane that Secret will have the edge in. Um, it's just whether or not they feel... And I think that's what Navi kind of want. They want General to have a what, straight 1v1 if possible. They want Queen of Pain Dendi to be somewhat uncontested in his 1v1. And so far, Puppy doesn't seem to be too clear where he wants to go. He is lurking around this bottom lane, so it does seem like he is going to make a play down here. Going to PyCat here, double stuns already up. PyCat is going to slow down some of his pursuers here with a clap, but they need a little bit more damage. Unfortunately, the bugs did not latch on a PyCat, and uh, he will manage to get away, but still, they force him back. They force some healing cells and clarities to be used. He also had magic stick charges, so he was definitely good. Yeah. Yeah, Puppy waited to for that double stun initiation, just couldn't quite close the gap fast enough. And Navi with, with PyCat healing up with the clarity, they could look to try and turn around some of this aggression. But similarly, Pilot Eye, he's got mana coming his way. And it looks like Puppy's just going to wander off, get some wards down, and see what, what else he can get done around this bottom lane. Looking for a courier, perhaps? Yeah, he was. He, he spotted out the courier because of this aggressive ward, but... Uh... Navi, similarly, they spotted uh, Puppy heading towards the Courier and pulled evasive maneuvers, so shouldn't be found here. Man, everywhere I look, it's just like Navi losing. 
You know, the, their tri-lane is, like, hiding underneath the tower. Uh, Dendi's forced to play back because uh, this Mystic Snake has now gotten very dangerous, and it keeps on bouncing to him over and over again uh, and stealing a lot of his mana. And then General is playing, uh, well, he's playing jungle half the time. That's really the, the one little bright light here yeah. for the Navi roster. Pycat maybe gone on here. Stunned up. MP is going to be able to get close enough. Telekinesis actually pushes him back. They now have a stun. They're going to try and finish on Pylite Die. Now Pycat is probably giving him up his life for this one, but at least they do get the kill. Now the Orban from the Paw Kezu will stop Biver's TP out with a the coil. They make that a two for one. Alright. I mean... Pycat making sure he gets the kill before he goes down, and the Puck TP and only secures a Rubik. I feel like that's not quite worth Kezu's rotation because he was actually having a really good time against this Axe up top. Axe was being pushed back in the jungle. Because uh, Kezu had that early treads, it was a pretty tough lane for him, so... Kezu wants to get more out of this movement, and he is now swinging through mid lane to see what he can do to Dendi. <laughs> Dendi's just always out of mana. Those Mystic Snakes are just going straight for him, and even the... Uh... Even the infused raindrop is not enough for him to be able to win this game of harassment. It really feels like Pycat, there's just no good lane for him. He TP's top as soon as he respawns. Like, all right, there's a tri-lane bottom and Puck's TP'd in. This top lane looks like a good place to get some farm and levels. But again, he's just slowly... He's taking a long time to come online. And Ursa, being a snowball hero, you don't want to see him have a bad laning stage. And that's exactly what's happening right now for Pycat. TP down to bottom. Dendi, this is where he's going to pick up his level 6, apparently. He's going to be leaving Midwan alone at uh, the mid lane and collecting some of this. I guess Dendi, being the most mobile hero, is probably the best to go against this uh, aggro tri lane that Secret was running. Of course, now the supports are kind of all over the place. Puppy sitting in the Radiant Jungle near mid. Pylidae on dire side, but also approaching that mid lane. Want to make sure that Midwan is safe with some of these heroes off map. It feels like a lot of lane swapping that doesn't necessarily advance Navi. Kezu caught out at top, but he's, yeah, he's they gone. Missed. They needed that, that instant crush while the telekinesis pullback was still happening and then managed to get the call, and there was just not the, the right kind of coordination from Navi to claim a kill like that. Puppy's able to stop Dendi getting the bounty rune and force him back to base. Everything coming up team secret right now. And normally you think like, okay, they're swapping their lanes, they want to turn them into more like like advantageous lanes. But they're going from like really bad lanes to still pretty bad lanes. They will snipe the courier with this smoke rotation. Stone Gaze is going to be able to go off fast enough. It is. Pylai die will be saved by that ultimate. And the rest of Na'Vi can't actually chase him down. But a courier was definitely a great pickup. If that whole entire rotation, that, that could have just happened, that smoke rotation by Na'Vi. And they could have just failed to pick up anything. The Courier is the, the bigger kill than the Ogre anyways, yeah. as far as income goes for your team. It does come at the cost. MP getting tons of space in this bottom lane, takes an early tower. Feels like MP and Kezu just have all the, the room in the world to just do whatever they want this game. If they want to TP and rotate, they can get kills for their team. But alternatively, they're probably like telling the team, like, look, if, if, if you guys can just hold your own in your lanes, I'm going to get this tower, or I'm just free farming away. Kezu can get a fast Blink Dagger and probably be like level 9, level 10 potentially, and have a lot of really strong rotation potential. So... This laning setup is looking really good for Tika right now. They're going to hit a very strong mid-game spike here based on how much they've won this early game. If the top three CS on Team Secret and are occupying the top three most of the time net worth spots. Puck and uh, Medusa are pretty much neck and neck with the Ursa, but it's Eventual Spirit who's pulling way out ahead. MP has been free farming for days. Vengeful Spirit is going to be a very dangerous threat going into the mid game with all this. Yep, just a short bit of gold away from that Helm of the Dominator and then things get very problematic with that extra creep that he can help protect himself with or play aggressive with. So mid lane Dendi, I think they can go a mid one here, but that is not particularly close. I mean, the TP in, if there wasn't an Ogre behind mid one, may have been a potential threat, but I think for Navi, you're just really eyeing off this Axe Blink Dagger. He's rushing it. I think Navi have recognized, I mean, you. I think he was going to this build regardless whether the lanes went poorly or not, but he is going to be the key like, game changer for them. When they get this Blink Dagger up, they need to start making rotations to kill core heroes. Like, this Venge is getting away with way too much down bottom. Same for Puck up top. You need the Queen of Pain and Axe to kind of team up, go for a smoke rotation immediately upon picking up the Blink. 
Yeah, big part of it is just uh, the secret cores, right? You can't fight into this Ventral Spirit early on, and then the Puck they didn't have any kill power against, so everything's banked on this Blink Dagger of General, and see if he can make the right kind of initiates to turn this thing. Now, mid one, oh man, he was kind of low mana, but then he got a, a pretty decent Mystic Snake, and now they're going to make their initiation onto multiple heroes, try and blow up mid one before he gets off the mana shield, and they do get him. Now a second one, Pile I Die also goes down, Puppy got to receive the shop from General here. Kezu comes in and does manage to get a turnaround kill, MP and Kezu. Dueling up here against three RMN misses out on the crush and they will not pursue into secret more than happy with a one for three exchange. We said the Splink Dagger is everything to Navi and General yeah. did accomplish just that for him. Yeah, it was, I, I think Secret, they, Secret themselves were in a strong position around that mid tower. They had Venge invised up. Level nine Venge, very scary at this stage because of how farm she is. Similarly, the Puck Blink Dagger had been picked up as well. Secret themselves were at a power spike there. The difference is, it's Navi get the initiation. Whoever jumps first there is going to win that fight. If Venge is able to get a stun out of the invis to burst down the Queen of Pain, that Axe Blink Dagger doesn't achieve what it does there because there's no there's no, there's no Queen of Pain Sonic Wave, there's no Scream, but it's Navi who take the initiative, get the jump, and Secret were just kind of sitting around. You can't really bait against the Blink Dagger because you're going to lose that Medusa before anything can happen. Um, and... Perhaps if Venge was in position to swap Medusa out, it could have been different. But that Medusa dropped so so fast. Ah, I mean, what about something as simple as him having Mana Shield up? Because I don't, he didn't, made right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could have just—he was hitting tower. He could have just had the Mana Shield up and been good, but didn't expect that instant initiation. Now, Secret have made a smoke rotation in. They got a successful scan, but what they don't expect is Navi are so grouped up here may still win it anyway. The enrage goes off from Pie Cap, but he's kind of stuck inside the trees with a bog on top of him too. Now coiled up, all of that is going to be used to bring little old Pie Cat down. So. They do manage to get that one. Mid one is going to be the target of a rotation of general once again, but this time with the mana shield up, it seems pretty unlikely they'll be able to kill him. Yeah, imagine it was perhaps oversight from mid one last time, not having having it online. There's not really any reason that he doesn't need to save his mana for an ulti mystic snake. He, I mean, he had more than enough mana for mana shield and to use one of those spells. So, as it stands, it's some space for Iron Man. He's going to just. Watch Pycat go down while he gets some vamp towards his Blink Dagger up top. And we'll see if Navi, probably waiting that Sonic Wave cooldown, look to make another aggressive maneuver now. General has Blink Dagger. He's just going to camp around this top lane, and this is actually looking like a potential tier 1 tower. And yeah, with, with Dendi and Biver's rotations up here, this is uh, pretty much an impossible position to defend. Pycat, though, is in no man's land. You should not be down here when you've got four, te four teammates pushing up top, and the enemy's missing from the map. So yeah, he needs to... To vacate this bottom lane. Secret well, are here in force. That, that's the bad part about these uh, these Medusa lineups when you're facing them. It's it's not like it's a clear push that you have to defend. It's always present, right? That chip damage is always there. So even though Navi are hitting these, uh, they're beginning to hit some of these timings for the mid game, they're still losing these towers just by simple small rotations. Nice initiation from General. A two-man call leading to the Sonic Wave. Mid one will survive through it initially, but doesn't have enough mana for the Stone Gaze, so he can't actually repel Navi. Navi get the opportunity to just run over whatever heroes they can. They've already picked up two bolt cores from Secret. Now they're looking for a support as well. Puppy is dusted up. They're going to be able to get the Cross of Haze and the call, so Puppy doesn't have a chance for a time lapse there. Three down on the side of Secret. Another big turnaround here from Na'Vi. The execution just seems to be their favor as every single one of these fights is about a, a 1,500 to 2,000 gold exchange. Yeah, I mean, there, there's good reason why. In Na'Vi, through all their struggles with some of their past rosters, everyone was always hyping up General. And everyone, whenever you talk about Na'Vi going to a series, you're like, they got to play around General. This is the guy who can win them games. This is the one player of Na'Vi who is like the X-Factor of them. Similar to like maybe what DJ was for Fnatic. This guy has been phenomenal. And these these two initiations he's had, the timings when he's gone for them have been perfect. Hitting both the Venge and the Medusa there in that blink call was crucial. Perhaps a bit of a misplay by Secret by positioning them such that that could happen, but still fantastic from General. He will go down a mid lane though. Not so fantastic. We cursed him a little bit there, but yeah. I, all in all, like Na'Vi, the, these team fights are exactly what they need. They time it. They get an Aegis off of that, that successful uh, fight at bottom while Secret are kept busy, and suddenly they've got two good team fights in a row. PyCat's got some decent farm. He's now going to have a, a Blink Dagger soon, and Navi can look to take another fight once they've got Sonic Wave back up again. And yeah, Navi get caught trying to be aggressive, trying to create space for that uh, 
that Aegis in general does go down, but well worth it. Level 12 Ursa with an Aegis. With a Blink Dagger coming in and a Helmet Dominator creep. We've got Initiation across the board now. And Secret are probably going to have to play a lot more grouped up. Which means they're not going to... The the first 10 minutes of this game, it was a very nice static laning phase. Where everyone was split apart and all their lanes were good. But now they're ra very rapidly going to see on Pilot Die here. That with all these Blink Daggers coming in. Secret don't really stand a chance that they split apart. They're going to have to group up more. And that's just going to be... In, uh, I think Vengeful Spirit's farm is going to slow down quite a bit because Dusa is probably going to be the primary farmer. I mean, Vengeful is top of the net worth by a good thousand gold at one point, but that has quickly ceased to be the case here as Navi going the aggressive with a smoke and... Get a little bit more Kez here. Attempted crush. Kezu's phase shift is level two, so it lasted just long enough, but he doesn't manage to get away oh, from that first. intense physical damage thanks to Corrosive Haze. Yeah, this is Navi just picking them off one by one, and this is, I think a lot goes back to the draft and the Navi playstyle. They'll get, they'll put RMN and General both on playmakers. They like to have these like dual initiators, not just be relying on one person. And Secret themselves only have Kezu for that role, and Puck is just not really that reliable as of an initiator compared to a Slider or an Axe. You get an instant pickup with the Slider, the Axe, the Puck. You blink, you dream call. There's possibility of a counterplay because that hero is not stunned for all too long. Yeah, I, I love that that the way that Navi set that up, right? They go for this initiation without a smoke. They just straight up run into the lane while it was uh, it was dark and blink in with this fresh blink dagger, a pie cat, get a quick kill, and then they show a couple of heroes, but they still smoke up and they still move aggressively. Something that Secret very clearly were unprepared for, um, as they're tra just trying to figure. Hey, Navi, they they picked off one. They're probably gonna go for a top lane push, and we're just gonna farm our jungle in the meantime. But that extra bit of aggression from Navi that is very rapidly becoming this new squad signature style does catch Secret off guard, and it does result in another big core kill. More pressure onto this mid tower, which they desperately need to take, right? This is one of the keys to unlocking some of the dire jungle that Secret are uh, benefiting from so intensely. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see if Navi want to make a, a kind of aggressive play around this mid lane MP. Very tanky. 1800 HP! At 18 minutes in, holy crap, that is, uh, that is unbelievable. Venge, what a hero. Yeah. This is why you play the Venge as a core. And you've got uh, a lot of armor to back that up, too, because you are an agility hero, so. Uh, RMN. They do have some very aggressive wards, so I believe some of this has been scouted. RMN doesn't actually see Pylai die. They kind of walk past each other. RMN will zip away with his sprint, but seeing two bottom, they're gonna try and put pressure on mid now with their three heroes. Uh, but here comes the TP rotations. Silence. Do have to be a little bit careful here. There is an opportunity for an instant stun if they get a coil and swamp at the same time. Pykai could be in a bad position, but General's there with the recourse. They manage to get a call on MP, but he's too tanky. Now mid one right in the middle of all this with the stone gaze. Pykai has to turn and fight, but there goes that Aegis, and there goes General too. The initiator's down. Our men's pushed away. That's going to be another form of initiation that's going to be missing for Na'Vi. Fortunately, they do manage to get the Ursa out with a quick blink after the Aegis revive, but it's still a nasty engagement. They really wanted to take that mid lane tower, but Secret denied them that. Yeah, MP again, his tankiness coming into play there, and mid one showing up at the perfect time with the Stone Gaze. Really good usage. As soon as Navi engaging you with the Ursa, you've got to pop that, and the result of that is General instantly dies. General's relying on that blink follow up from the Ursa, the Slaughter, even a Queen of Pain blink in. Navi have four blink gap closing heroes. And they want to just try and overrun Secret with numbers. Like when they get that first kill, suddenly there's four heroes on you and there's no counterplay possible. But by instantly stone gazing, Ursa gets forced back. Even with an Aegis, he can't just let himself get stone gazed up. There's no point in that. You're not going to get the kill. So Secret able to take out General and without General alive, that fight gets very, very tricky. I wonder how many uh, smokes Navi have left. They don't have any in their inventory, but. Uh... It does kind of feel like they were operating on smoke ganks before and they got themselves, you know, a few team fights and a few pickoffs that were quite notable and managed to get some good map control back. But 
in these kind of uh, just more straight face plays, especially because of the fact that Secret have such good, strong, like aggressive uh, wards that are able to see a lot of these rotations before they're even close to Secret. It does seem like the, the Navi rotations are being read by Secret when they're not smoked and as a result being countered quite nicely. Yeah, I think the other big thing is both Medusa and Venge at this point where Smoke ganks and rotations aren't just going to kill them. Now with a Manta yeah. style and an extra ulti orb, mid one is very tanky. Same for MP. Uh, he's getting incredibly tanky himself on the bench. And once Puppy has an Aghanim Scepter, I think the ability to blink in and burst one hero down just gets taken away. And that's where Navi's draft perhaps struggles to kind of function in a teamfight setting. They can't really initiate easily on Secret unless they're initiating on Puppy himself. One of the things is they need some extra damage. Out of their initiation, General's trying to finish up a blade mail, but it's going to be swapped back here. Secret, ah, well, but Kezu kind of blinks a little bit too far forward. General does manage to get off the call, survives for a while, but will still end up going down. No extra disables needed. More TPs out, Pivers should be able to make it. Gets caught by the, oh, Coil just half second late there. Kezu decently fast on the reactions from the bug catch, but not good enough. Yeah, not the end of the world for Secret, who... Probably just back off, defend some of these lanes. Pycat needs to not get caught out here as they get dewarded, but Navi looks like we'll just play some efficiency game up top. It will be a Deso as Pycat's next major item. Interesting option. Good synergy with all the minus armor from the Slada, but not the typical Ursa pickup you'd, you'd expect. I, I think it's required here in this game because they, they don't really have a building hitter, right? And they have to close out this game sometime soon because it is a Medusa. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think in, in many ways, PyCat doesn't have any other options. He's got to go for this this pickup. These, he has to go for offensive items, first of all, because they need more damage. And he has to go for building hitting just because no one else is going to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think... With the fact that Iron Man General are both playing initiates, there's no damage coming from them. It's only Dendi who has damage output. And if Sonic Wave's on cooldown, like, how do you take a fight? Like, where's your damage coming from? So, yeah, the, the Deso makes total sense. He'll go back for the Aghanim Scepter afterwards. But I think, yeah, this, an item like this almost feels like a necessity for, for Navi to be able to scale. and Not even scale to the late game, but just scale into this mid game to be able to kill heroes like Medusa, Venge, and... Uh oh. See what the secret can do. This We've been is talking about these aggressive Pycat. wards. Wow, Pycat. He had the read. Some of the uh, mid lane, maybe he spotted something from the mid lane wow. creeps or something, but uh, he does manage to blink away ahead of Kazu. Sick reaction from him, and Navi will look to trade top lane for mid lane. They may not even lose mid. And if Secret want to stop this tower push from coming, they'll just have to TP back and forego pushing at the moment. And yeah, it looks like that's going to be the, the call. It's probably for the best. They're about to finish up that Scotty on mid one. So that will be huge because uh, many of these heroes, they have the initiation, but as we've said, they don't have the damage to pop many of these heroes. And then they'll have a hard time getting out of the fight once that Scotty's up on mid one. Yep. So next Roshan, I think, becomes key for, for both teams, but much more so Navi, like who can't let Secret get the next Aegis and really want it themselves on Ursa. Like, you've got this Desolator build, you're very squishy. Um, your impact in a fight is very volatile. Like, the difference between doing zero damage in a fight or doing the most damage in a fight can just be one one stun or having an extra life. So, getting Pycat in Aegis becomes a high priority for Na'Vi, but it's more about the how, not the if you can get it. MP's in an awkward position here. He may be caught by these shrine rotations. Pycat's not going to turn around, though. He just keeps on marching forward. Goes for Pylai Die because RMN's the back lines. They do also catch MP with that blade mail. It's going to do a decent amount of damage. They've caught Pylai Die, but the stone case is turning them away from MP, who managed to get the swap back. Biver, a free pick off there. Pycat still trying to lay waste to the back lines there, but is going to be coiled up and now kited around. He will end up going down here to mid one as they turn. RMN also being caught and Dendi having very little impact in that team fight, was not able to line up a good Sonic Wave with such a disjointed two-sided fight. Yeah, it got split up perfectly by that Stone Gaze. Like, Ursa just ignored the Medusa because he was behind her, so just kept right-clicking the backlines. But that was initially just an Ogre. And then it was Puppy on the Weaver. You're not going to kill a Weaver as an Ursa. You're always going to get kited around. The Shikuchi, the time-lapse, there's zero way to kill Puppy there. And... As you kind of mentioned, Dendi not really being able to get himself into that fight, line up a Sonic Wave meant that the initiation was kind of wasted, they couldn't bring down MP, and, well, Secret, pick up those next couple of items, the Skadi is there, MP, 
has a Hurricane Pike back at base, and it's going to go back for a Solar Crest. This is an item that can completely cripple Pycat, so it's going to be very, very tough for this Ursa in these upcoming fights, getting kited around, getting Solar Crested up. I think Na'Vi know they're smoking up, perhaps hoping... No, they know Roche is up in the next 45 seconds because that's the max respawn time, but it is that max respawn, and that's where they will unfortunately not be so lucky. Blink is going to result in nothing. RMN gets his smoke pop. Now going to be swapped back by MP straight into a stun. Puppy activates the shrine. Thinking, ah, if the fight's coming to me, I'll need a little bit of extra HP and mana to work with. And now Na'Vi with that smoke thinking they were trying to challenge Roshan have just given it away potentially with 40 seconds left on RMN and only a few seconds left on the Roshan respawn time. Yeah. It's nice to... It is definitely more interesting to have that kind of dynamic Roche timer because it makes it so much harder to plan some of these plays. You kind of got to roll the dice a bit. And if you're behind, you can't just say, all right, we smoked the second Roche's respawn. You don't know when it respawns. So when you're in this disadvantageous position as Na'Vi, you've got to take a risk and that risk does not pay off there. Roche wasn't up for Pyke. If it was up, he could have just taken Roche while his team just sat around the pit, smoked up, waiting to see if Secret came in and used like your positional advantage. But there was no Roche. Iron Man goes for a, a too aggressive of a play on the high ground and they get punished, so. This game continues to go south for Na'Vi, and that Roche could potentially be taken by Secret. They've got Minus Armor from Venge as well as Weaver. Plenty of damage output to kill it if they want to. Pycat's all in. <laughs> you got that tier two, I guess. Now, yeah, now, he is going to die for his sins. Well, maybe uh, Navi can get another tower off of that. They forced a lot of rotations with that because they probably thought there's no way PyCat's committing like this without some backup. So now most of the heroes are on the top half of the map and they're going to try and go for a bottom lane push while Roshan is being taken by Secret. Yeah, getting a, a tier one or something would be at least nice, but they've lost all map control. All they're out of towers. The shrines were starting to fall. It was Navi who are, who are losing their top shrine by Roshan. Uh, before Secret's like, wait a second, let's just TP back and get these kills, but yeah, this is this is going to be tough. They really want they could defend bottom, but it doesn't look like Medusa has any interest in TPing in. Doesn't even have a TP scroll currently, so we'll just make the long walk towards this bottom lane. Na'Vi not, uh, Secret not really in any rush right now. Like, their lineup's going to scale fantastically. Like, they're stronger right now, they've got the Aegis and all, but they don't have to try and end this game necessarily if anything they're better off just shutting down some of the, the navi progression and playing it a bit safer uh, until they're sure they can get that high ground push happening shrines being taken out there's just that uh bottom shrine left now for the radiant sign secret are even removing a lot of vision away from navi navi are looking to be able to catch something because they know the medusa is bottom but they just can't quite get there in fact oh. and medusa's already back now yeah, so now Medusa TPing onto the Shrine. Secret will begin their turn. They're going to get some combo stuns here onto Pycat. RMN's going to interrupt that one. Does manage to get a decent crush, but now caught in a two-man coil. Kezu makes sure that two of them will end up going down. Biver also going to be caught next to uh, next to RMN. So both the supports down from Na'Vi. Now a push will ensue from Secret. Shrine's a... Uh... Pretty big change to the way the Dota 2 has played out now. You've lost both your top towers, you've lost your mid-tier one, yet Medusa is still able to TP back in, not directly in the fight, but very close to the fight, after pushing out the bottom lane, and is in a position to join the team for a high ground push. With both supports dead, Na'Vi trying to get some scraps of farm in the middle and the bottom side of the map. Uh, General has 2.7k gold, but at this point may just need buyback for this high ground defense, and I don't even know if Na'Vi can defend this one. Yeah, it seems like no matter what happens, they're going to be crippled. If they can defend this, they will have lost most of their map control, and it'll be hard to gain that back. General's going to come in with his Shadow Blade, try to go for the back lines here with the Shadow Blade and the Blink Dagger, but they do have the counter vision. He managed to blink away from that one, but now swap back in. He's initiation, going to be total futile now as he gets... Right click to part. RMN also going to be caught here. Nice activation of the shrine by Biver while Pycat goes for the, some of the side heroes, but can't finish any of them off. There's too many four staffs, too many swaps, too many problems for him to lock down these very mobile heroes. And now Midwan just keeps on marching forward. He's got half the mana, still has Aegis, has that Solar Crest to be able to work off of, and all of Secret is sitting behind him, waiting to go. Another time lapse activated by Puppy. 
on a mid one, healing off a at small baby. 16 damage. second cooldown. Like, yeah, just to give him like an extra 300 mana Oof. puppy time lapses. They lose Kezu though. Yeah, that's something. Dendi's gonna keep on moving forward here. They kind of ignore Dendi. Just go ahead and keep on right clicking down Pycat. MP, make sure he continues to kite that hero puppy. Oh, he gets taken apart there with the enrage activated by Pycat. He does the extra damage necessary. Sonic Wave hits a little bit there. Does manage to finish off MP. Pycat desperately needs to get away though. It does have a blink dagger up. He's good. Now they're trying to they can actually pursue this one out, especially with RMN. They're going to be able to catch Pylai Die here. Mid one is going to turn and fight as best he can, but I'm not sure if mid one can, though. He is going to be able to pick up one and is going to be brought down. The problem is on his second life, he's not going to be yes. receiving any help. Navi are actually going to buy back on RMN just to make sure that mid one can't actually escape. They're going to get the Crows of Haze, and Pycatch just waiting and waiting and waiting until he can make his initiation. General almost dies here, but the Shadow Blade activated. Now the Enrage with the damage coming in. Mid one pops a Manta. Maybe he can still pick up a couple more kills here. General gets the call. He gets one. He was so close to picking up two or three more. He almost 1v4 the rest of Na'Vi. <laughs> that was exciting to watch. I'm watching this like, is he actually going to 1v4? That slider buyback, really good call from Iron Man. Recognize, all right, this Deuce is about to respawn with Butterfly, full HP, full mana. My Axe can't fight, my Ursa can't fight. I've got to buy back to stop the Deucer teeping out and make sure we get this kill, which will at least salvage this high ground defense into a slightly acceptable and still playable position. But that was Barely. some hold from Na'Vi. Like the, the fact they're still yeah. in this game is a big surprise to me. I mean, it goes to show, for, first of all, I think we learned from that top lane engagement, that really awkward one where they half ignored MP. Um, and PyCat jump forward, they, they can't split their damage up. They they yeah. have to utilize the small bit of disables that they have and the burst damage of the Ursa to focus one hero down. And that's what they did uh, in the winning part of that engagement, right? They blink in, they kill Kezu really quickly. Yes. And then they kind of kite yeah, back. Kind of react with time lapse. Like, he had time lapse up, it was just too fast. Silence, on to two. RMN and Dendi gonna be caught inside the coil, but now General managed to get a call. If they can continue to lock down Puppy, this would be a big kill, but none of their disables can get there in time, Biver did not have the Blink Dagger up, so Secret will manage to escape. Navi unable to get, uh, they really needed a pickoff so they can maintain some sort of aggressive force while mid one was dead, but uh, that's not gonna be the case here and they're gonna start losing map control once again. Yeah. Bit of an interesting, go back to the Shadow Blade General, interesting little pickoff. I feel like he got really unlucky with that Sentry Ward top lane. Like, yeah, teams are often gonna push for the Sentry, but up until that point, Navi had no invis. So that, that Sentry in lane was purely to scout out like a high ground Observer Ward or something. It's not, yeah. It wasn't even in a position to scout out the high ground Observer Ward, which teams often have when they're defending high ground. So I, I feel like that was a pretty good play of his to pick up a Shadow Blade to try invis into that fight. Secret just happened to be ready for it with, with the Sentry Ward, despite there being no invis. Yeah, General knows he can't just go on the Medusa, right? He's got to get the back line. That's been a problem for most yeah. of Navi. It's why these smoke initiations are oftentimes the most successful. Not sure if this one's going to be, though. They're going to go on a Pylai Die first. Swap back. My MP's right in the middle of all these heroes. So is mid one though. He immediately goes and targets General first with all this damage. Good Sonic Wave. The back lines. Pycat does manage to kill Pylai Die. He now focuses on Kezu. Can't quite get him, though. Too mobile. And he's now locked in by the Dream Coil. Our men tries to come in. Give him some relief. The Crush comes in a bit too late, though. 70 seconds on the clock for PyCat RMN. A similar scenario here. General comes in with the Blade Belt, does manage to finish off MP, and mid one's running out of mana. But do they have the damage to finish him off? A little bit more of a juke, and they get him. Finally, General Bloods manage to bring him down with the Culling Blade. They're going to pursue for more now with the Shadow Blade and Blink Dagger. Puppy gets spotted out. Shikuchi stolen by Biver, but he is too quick, and it looks like Kezu is going to be able to get away from Dendi as well. Another surprising engagement, the smoke push out by Na'Vi does result in a pretty decent trade-off. It's one of those things that Na'Vi can keep buying times. I feel like they've got one last like good peak for their life. Like I don't think they're going to win the like super late game, but if they can get Dendi to level 25, get that spell life still going with an Octarine Core, and the other item I think is the Aghanim Scepter on on PyCat's Earth. So if they can get those two things happening, they'll reach another like kind of decent power spike where perhaps they'll be able to fight into Team Secret. If they can keep getting these jumps on the back lines, like ideally the Weaver, the other big hero is the Puck, as you kind of saw in that high ground defense earlier. If you can kill these heroes at the side of the fights with your Slaughter and your uh, Axe initiations, things could start going all right for Na'Vi. They have, we've seen a couple of times, they can deal with 
Medusa. They just can't attack her first. She's going to be the last hero you go for. Similarly, MP, I feel like you can't be fighting him at the start of the fight. He's got the Solar Crest, the Hurricane Pike. He's got good mobility. You've got to ignore these two carries. It's it's very counterintuitive for most lineups. Like, you want to kill the mid or the carry first. Like these are the, the problem heroes. But with this secret draft deck heroes, you've just got to ignore because of the time lapse and because of just how much like utility these other heroes like the, the weaver and the puck offer in these fights yeah because it's going to be uh even higher priority and even more rewarding to kill because of uh, a scythe of ice pickup that he's working towards again any sort of quick initiation if they could just eliminate all that net worth from him real quickly that would be mega value and then uh, as you said puppy another problem heroes with that Aghanim's time lapse always ready to go. Navi might be able to sneak in a Roshan here though before Secret can make the rotation across with the Corrosive Haze, Deso, and just sheer physical damage on Pycat. Let's claim that pickup and this could be a finished up uh, Ags now for Pycat. I'm not sure if saving for buyback with the Aegis is really worth. I think the position they're in is like one of those, like when you're down to racks and you're fighting a lineup that's gonna scale better than you and has an advantage, saving for buyback, is not something you want to do like as one of the damage deals. Like a slider or an axe saving for buyback seems fine because they're going to the one starting a fight and they're likely going to die when they initiate. So if they can come back and provide like a second round of control, fantastic. General is, is on cooldown though. Uh, RMN uh, is also on cooldown, but those are the two heroes you want to have buyback on. The co-op, the Ursa, just, just buy all out if you can. Like you want to make sure you have those, those big items that uh, will allow you to win a fight. BKB, the next choice for General. But as you said, the big key game-changing items potentially have been picked up by Na'Vi. They just need that, they desperately need that level 25 for Queen of Pain. That would be the sweetest upgrade, especially with this cheese. He would have such great survivability and something that Secret may not be expecting there. Trying to uh, keep top lane pushed out. They're going to cut the wave while General continues his push. He is going to start TPing back though, anticipating Secret's push through mid now. Mid one's got a pretty good level 25 talent himself coming soon with the 25% lifesteal. Some of these fights, I feel like if, if he had lifesteal in those last like two fights and engagements, oh, yeah. I think he would have, I mean, he would have easily won that one before. That lifesteal would have made all the difference there. And that last fight, I think, would have also tipped the tide in his favor. So his level 25, it looks like yeah, he's farming ancients, he's farming neutrals. He just wants to try and finish that one up. Smoked up. I think you go for this dome gaze stun here. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think most of the time enemy teams play uh, around the stone gaze enough that you can't uh, you can't ever level that thinking you're going to be able to yeah. reliably get that stun out in the first place. Yeah, and one second, it's not like from three to four seconds isn't like a game changer necessarily. Whereas twenty five percent life steal from zero, that's potentially going to to turn around a fight in your favor. So. See how secret they're looking to siege into an Aegis. I mean, that really shows how confident they feel their position. Oh, is. those lightning procs are kind of rough. They are going to start going onto the Queen of Pain here. Locked in, Scythe of Ice, as well as the Coil. He is going to get a helpful four staff there from Biver, and they activate the Shrine as well. They're taking receiving so much damage from mid one and his Dusa with the bouncing lightning and all the split shot. They're all dropping low here. They need to activate another Shrine. Going to throw back another Medusa illusion into the real one, but it doesn't save Biver's life. He's now down for 50 seconds, and Secret have a numbers advantage. General needs to even this out. He needs to find the right kind of initiation. They're going to start going on to him with PyCat, but Jesus, look at him. He doesn't do anything, and mid one just rips him apart. Now RMN somehow gets caught in the stone gaze. PyCat comes back, but they're scottied up. They're easily going to be able to kite around this carry, and I think Navi, it's time to say goodnight for game one. Yeah. They're down with three heroes. No buyback. That douche just like walked in, fighting into an Aegis, fighting into a cheese. Just... That was 1v5-ing with Bloodlust, with Lotus Orb. You can't touch mid one. You've, you've got to find a way to get the back lines. When he's got all these buffs on him, there is absolutely nothing you can do. The time lapse is sitting behind him and felt like Na'Vi. I mean, the, the vision game and their position was such that mid one was in their face and they couldn't get past him. Really, really well, well closed out by Secret. And the Aegis cheese, a lot of teams would have like said, oh, let's just chill, let's just wait till those expire. But Na'Vi is like, uh, Secret's just like, well, what are they going to do to us? We can, we're not scared of two lives on an Ursa. So we just, he does zero damage the first life. He'll do zero damage the second life. At this point, Gods, uh, are you comfortable saying that um, that was more of a, a draft and, and laning decision win from Team Secret? The fact that they managed to have such a, a potent laning phase against uh, Navi's very mid-game focused lineup. It never really let them get the 
get on the ground with the wheels running. Yeah, draft-wise, I think the Medusa counted heavily the Navi draft. It was a great last pick. Uh, and then, so at that point, like, I think draft-wise, uh, Secret had an advantage, and then the laning stage went really poor. Like, worse than I thought it'd go for Navi. I'm like, okay, Navi, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this Ursa pick and where their draft ended up, but, but perhaps they can make up for it by having a strong laning phase, and they lost the lanes hard. So I think they were, like, at that point, the game is, like, 2080 in Secret's favor or something. Like, it, it gets really hard to play at that point. I mean, they made, they fought really well. Like, if anything, I, I feel like the takeaway from this game for me with Navi is, like, if they can get like a more even draft and not get caught by surprise by some like tenth pick like that, they're playing well. And like they're this is them playing at the same level as when they beat Secret. They just need to shore up their drafts and lanes. So a strategy win for Team Secret. Very dominant victory in game one. We'll have a break and be back with game two in this elimination best of three.